so much for your hard work, for coordinating this event, and for everything that you do to support and uplift the people of African American descent in this city. If nobody has your back, Felicia has your back. even though we sometimes have arguments privately. It's because we love our community. It's because we believe in our community and we want to uplift our community in San Francisco. After such a very challenging time, but also a challenging history. And Dr. Canton today spoke about that history because I know for me, growing up, Juneteenth was a part. Juneteenth was fun. Right. Juneteenth was carnival rides and seeing the horses go down Fillmore Street and being able to come together as a community and to see folks on stage and see all these magnificent things. See, at that time, we didn't have cell phones and social media and all that, so we actually talked to each other and engaged with one another a lot differently. But it's also so critically important to talk about the history and to just remind people of many of the challenges that are in our recent history. This is not so long ago in American history. And in fact, as Dr. Canton talked about the history of Juneteenth overall, I wanted to just touch a little bit on the history of Juneteenth in San Francisco. Arguably, and you know, I see Reverend Brown in the audience, so he will correct me if I'm wrong. But arguably going back since around 1945, when Dr. Wesley Johnson, who was the owner of the Texas Playhouse on Fillmore Street. How many of you hung out there? No? Reverend Brown? No? <laughs> but many of us know about this rich history of San Francisco being known migrated here from Texas, including Dr. Wesley Johnson Sr., my grandmother and her siblings and others, came here for what they thought would be a better life. They joined the military, they worked on the shipyard, they worked hard in domestic work and, and a number of things that built this city of San Francisco. But then when it was time to let your hair down and come together, the place to be was Fillmore Street. And we also know that there are a lot of other communities where African Americans also lived, in the Bayview, in Lakeview, and other places. And Fillmore Street was just that gathering space. So Juneteenth, dating back to maybe 1945 and somewhat becoming a little bit more official in 1950, people came out with their best attire celebrating Freedom Day, celebrating freedom, but also presenting a new, a renewed call to action, wanting to see things change for the African American community, even back then, as redevelopment began the process of pretty much destroying the Fillmore community with bulldozers and not a lot of input from this community. So when you think about the past, not just the slavery and the challenges that existed, but it means, you know, in the process of our celebrations and in the process of being excited and happy about having so many affluent African Americans in this city in prominent positions and doing well in life, we still know that even today, in 2022, disproportionately, in a city that used to be at its height, close to 16% African Americans, and now at about 5% or less, we still see significant racial disparities. 
racial disparities and homelessness and the criminal justice system and housing access and you name it. So I want you all to know that as I celebrate Juneteenth, that 365 days out of the year and 366 on leap year, I'm thinking about this community, its history, the challenges, and our need to make significant investments in addressing those disparities. Significant investments that are going to focus on what we need to do to turn it around. The Dream Keeper Initiative, and I want to thank Cheryl Davis for her work
It's not about the percentage of the people of this population that we need to focus on. It's about focusing on investing in the disparities in order to eradicate them. I am tired of talking about statistics without real solutions and without making change happen. And I know together we will make that change happen with each and every one of you. So make sure that you support all the incredible activities that are going to be happening for Juneteenth. The first ever flag raising for Juneteenth will happen shortly. And I know Philmo wants to stay two days of Juneteenth on Fillmore Street, but guess what? We celebrate on Saturday on Philmo, and then we go on a Hunters Point on Sunday. So black people, let's stay 